Hello. Oh, hi everyone. I forgot to take off my mittens. I was just wearing them because we're going to actually hear a story today that has to do with mittens. And you might wonder why, because it is winter, but it's not that cold yet. The reason we're talking about mittens is because we're going to read the story by Jan Brett called The Mitten and think a little bit about what we're talking about in church this week, which is justice. What do mittens have to do with justice? We will talk about that after the story. This is one of my all-time favorite stories. So, once there was a boy named Nicky who wanted his new mittens made from wool as white as snow. At first, his grandmother, Baba, did not want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you'll never find it. But Nikki wanted snow white mittens and finally Baba made them. Here she is making them. After she finished, she said, when you come home, first I will look to see if you are safe and sound. But then I will look to see if you still have your snow white mittens. So off Nikki went, he was so excited. And it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped in the snow and was left behind. See the mitten? A mole, tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside. It was cozy and warm, just the right size. So he decided to stay. A snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat. It was then that he saw the mitten and he wiggled in feet first. The mole didn't think there was room for both of them, but when he saw the rabbit's big kickers, he moved over. So you see the rabbit and the mole snuggled in together. Next, a hedgehog came along. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move into the mitten and warm himself up. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled a little bit, but not being ones to argue with someone covered with prickles, they made space. As soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl, attracted by the commotion, swooped down. When he decided to move in also, the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. But when they saw the owl's glinty talons, they quickly let him in. You think he's gonna fit in there? I don't know how he's gonna fit in there. Up through the snow appeared a badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb his way in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, and the owl were not pleased. There was no room left. But when they saw his diggers, they gave him the thumb. 
see the thumb right there. How's it gonna fit in there? It started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A wa waft of warm steam rose in the air and a fox came trotting by and stopped to investigate. Just the sight of the cozy mitten made him feel drowsy. The fox poked his muzzle in. When the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth, they gave the fox lots of space. A great bear lumbered by. He spied the mitten and all plumped up. He looked at it. Not being one to be left out in the cold, he began to nose his way in. The animals were packed in as tightly as could be, but what animal would argue with a bear? The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged to many times its original size. But Baba's good, good knitting held fast. Look how big the mitten has gotten. Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. She wriggled into the one space left and made herself comfortable on top of the great bear's nose. Right there. The bear tickled by the mouse's whispers, whiskers gave an enormous sneeze. Achoo! The force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. On his way home, there they are, sorry about that. On his way home, Nikki saw a white shape in the distance. It was the lost mitten silhouetted against the blue sky. As he ran to catch his snow white mitten, he saw Baba's face in the window. First, she looked to see if he was safe and sound. And then she saw that he still had his new mittens. The end. She's seeing that stretched out mitten. The end. So you might wonder, first, how did all those animals fit in that one white mitten? And second, what does that have to do with justice? So in church, we talk a lot about something that in the Bible is referred to as the kingdom or the kingdom of heaven. Reverend Adam uses the phrase, the commonwealth. And I will often talk about heaven on earth. And what we mean by this is related to the story of all those animals snuggling in into this mitten together. Because often we think that there's not really enough space, right? There's not enough room for us all. There's not enough resources or money or love for us all. And then sometimes we treat people in a way that shows them that we don't value them, that there's not enough for them. And one of the reasons we talk about justice is because God calls us to build and be part of a world where there is space for everybody. The mitten can actually grow and expand and meet the needs of everybody. 
but it's our job to say, we have space for you here. It's our job to make a little bit of room and move over and create spaces for other people who are, might be different than we are. And in doing so, we stretch that mitten out into a big, beautiful white mitten that has space for everyone. And so that is my vision of heaven on earth, is a big mitten with space for everybody. And so I want to invite you this week to think a little bit about what your mitten might look like. Who is in your mitten right now? And who might you like to create space for? And perhaps you also think about what heaven on earth or the kingdom of heaven or the commonwealth might look like to you. Are there other images that come to your brain besides the mitten? So your invitation is to think about these things with me and I love to know what you come up with. And in the meantime, I want you to know that I am missing you all, um, wishing I could be with you in person, and also knowing that the safe thing is not to, like the animals, gather closely right now. But I'm sending my love to each and every one of you, as is the whole church. So until I see you again, take good care and many blessings on your week.